Hello, it's uh, next time when we want to know what God has done in man's life and uh, we know that uh, this man, God used this man so much and uh, uh, now we want to know what uh, God has done in your life. Alex Konya, would you please share how God was faithful to you? Well, thank you so much and I love to share my testimony and the reason for it is because all of the honor and glory goes to the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, I'm a Hungarian American. Uh, I, I was born into an American family in Cleveland, Ohio, but it was a Hungarian American family because all four of my grandparents were Hungarian immigrants. And our journey of faith as a family began actually with my great grandfather when he was still in Hungary who was the first one in our family to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And then my grandmother and grandfather on both sides emigrated to the United States to the Midwest through wonderful means that God used. They heard the gospel uh, from brothers and sisters in the Lord, and uh, they were gloriously saved and began to attend church. And so my parents grew up in a Christian home. Actually, they met at a Baptist youth rally, Hungarian Baptist youth rally in Akron, Ohio. And uh, so I was born into a Christian family. And uh, when the doors of the church were basically open, we were there. And I can remember hearing the gospel from my earliest memories. And so that is what my life was like. Went to Sunday school, learned all the stories, but as I began to get into the age of about 11, 12 years old, um, I sort of began to get skeptical. Uh, people thought that I was a believer uh, because of some misunderstandings. In fact, the pastor even baptized me. I suspected I wasn't a believer, but I was afraid to tell him I wasn't, so I went ahead with it. And I went into the water a dry sinner and came out a wet sinner. But uh, baptism does not change the heart. And I knew the language. I knew the Christian language, the language of Canaan, so to speak. I knew how to talk like a believer. I knew how to act like one because I was raised in church. But when I was in school, when I was with my friends at school, I was a very, very different person. And actually, I began to question the whole thing. And uh, I love to play the saxophone. I started with the clarinet, and I'm a musician. And uh, my goal in life was to become a jazz saxophone player. And uh, so I was in the band, I was in a lot of musical things, uh, wanting to get involved in jazz, wanting to go to New York City and study at Juilliard School of Music and all of this cool stuff. Uh, God was the farthest thing from my mind. But then when I was 17 years old in the spring of that year, uh, an evangelist came with his brother. I wasn't too impressed with the evangelist, actually, but the brother was a great trumpet player, and that caught my attention. And he shared how he was in his youth group, and he was active, and everybody thought he was a Christian and all the rest, but he was a phony. He was playing the game, and in fact, he had real questions. And then he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and that got my attention. And that week, the Holy Spirit started working in my heart. And I remember I went home and I opened up a modern paraphrase of the Bible. And I read the entire Gospel of Mark in one night because I said, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm either going to be an atheist and go that direction. Or if this is real, if this is true, if Jesus Christ really did die for my sins and rise again, and he really is the son of God, like I just heard from the trumpet player, I'm not going to be halfway in and halfway out. I'm going to trust him as my savior, and I'm going to be 110% all in. Or I'm not going to do it at all, because, you know, I'd seen other friends that were hypocrites, and I knew what they were like being nice boys and girls in church. And when they were away from that, they were just like the rest of the world. And I said, if this is real, he deserves everything. And um, I'm going to trust him as my savior. I'm going to follow him with all my life. And so during the week, I thought about that. And on Sunday evening at the last meeting, 
I remember going into the room, the little office of the pastor, with a couple of other guys, and I told him, I really doubt that I'm a believer. And right in that room, I trusted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And I also committed my life to him at that time as well. And I had, of course, it was almost time to graduate from school, and I'm thinking, now what do I do? And my grandfather suggested a place called Cedarville University, a great Bible department there with a great pastor that had a radio program. And I ended up going there and uh, taking a Bible major. That's where I met my wife, Pam. And we've been married now 51 years. And she came there and we met when she was walking on the path to her dorm one day. And I saw her and began talking to her. And um, a year later, we got married. And um, I began to prepare for the ministry because I, would, I felt certain that I was called to be either a pastor or an evangelist. So after finishing Cedarville, um, I pastored for a couple of years, then went to Grace Seminary. And uh, following Grace Seminary, I ended up as an associate pastor in South Bend, Indiana. And then the senior pastor, God gave us two more kids. We pastored for 15 years there in South Bend, wonderful years. But then in 1990, I took out, 1989 actually, in November of that year, I took out to lunch a Word of Light missionary that was headed to Germany. And it was then West Germany and East Germany. The wall had not quite yet come down. And he was talking about in Hungary how now there was freedom and there was this castle and uh, that they wanted to have a camp, they wanted to have a Bible institute, but the language was really rough. And I started laughing. I said, oh, the language can't be that rough. My grandmother could speak it perfectly when she was five years old. And he said, how could she do that? And I said, simple, she's Hungarian. She was born there. And he said, you're Hungarian? I said, yes. He said, you know, you ought to think about teaching at that Bible school. And, you know, uh, I wasn't planning on leaving that pastorate. It was a great church and wasn't thinking about leaving. He wasn't thinking I was, would look to leave full time. He thought to come as a guest lecturer maybe because he couldn't imagine we would leave the church we were at. But the Holy Spirit used that. And I came home, told Pam, we started praying about it. And along the path, God made it very, very clear over the following months that he was leading in that direction. And so I, we were accepted at the Word of Life Candidate School. And the church that I pastored for 15 years became our sending church, and still is. And so we packed our bags in 1992, moved here to Hungary, where we helped open the Bible Institute. That opened in 1994, and I was the main teacher there for about 10 years, and then the director here at World Life Hungary for 10 years, and then for about another 10 years, or eight years, um, regional director for World of Life's ministries in Europe. And now we have just retired, technically, but actually, we're still very busy in the Lord's work and very, very excited, excited to serve him. Uh, my life's verse is Mark 1.18, which says, And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Three things that hit me when I read that. Number one, immediately. Uh, they didn't waste time. When they knew God's will, they were ready to do it. They forsook their nets. You have to leave something behind when you follow Christ. And they left their nets. They had a good situation there, good business. They left their nets and they followed him. And so when I came to Christ at age 17, uh, I left behind the desire to be a professional jazz saxophone player, although I still play in churches and do concerts and stuff. But for the Lord, God sanctified my horn. <laughs> and um, I opened my heart to the Lord who led led Pam and me to serve in, in a pastorate and missionary setting. And I would say this, I would say this to anybody thinking about God's claim on their life, I would say this, it is always, always, always worth it to follow Christ. And that's my story. Praise God, it's just, it's just a miracle. What yeah, it God is, it is. Done in your life and uh, um, we see how, um, how fulfilled how God fulfilled your life and yeah. uh, uh, but where what was the hardest thing in your life and 
How did God brought you out of this? The hardest thing in my life. Well, on a human level, one of the most difficult things is probably uh, the birth of our third grandchild, a daughter named Isabella, Izzy. And uh, she was born, and she is now 14 years old. Wow. And she was born in California with many, um, many disabilities. And she still is very disabled. She is in a wheelchair, and I'm not going to describe the many other things. She does go to a special needs school, and she's a happy young lady. But it was very, very difficult to watch her go through numerous fights for her life in a intensive care ward filled with sick kids, uh, watch her go through a nine hour back surgery when she was about 10. And uh, you look at somebody like that and you say, yeah, we know God, you can use it for good, but couldn't you come up with another plan besides taking a little sweet one, two year old girl and putting her through all of this. Mm -hmm. And um, you come to the point in those things in life where you say, I may not like it, it may not feel good, but I will choose to trust. And that is what got us over all of that. We chose to trust God for the life of our granddaughter. And she is still going and she is happy there in California. And uh, that was probably one of the more difficult times in our lives. Please God, yeah. just trust. Mm. And uh... Anyway, your your story is uh, so much to say, and uh, <laughs> um, uh, but w was was your life short, or it took some time, some decisions, some sometimes waiting time, but or it uh, like just like a vapor. Uh, well, <laughs> Bible says our life is like a vapor, and the older you get, it seems like the faster the time goes. But you know, it's very interesting in our lives. We never looked for a ministry in our every every place that we have served at, we were not applying for and we're not necessarily looking for. We weren't looking to leave our church. We weren't looking to go to our church. It started out as a ministry assignment as a student at Grace Seminary. I wasn't looking to be a director. I wasn't looking to be a European director. But we learned that you follow the Lord as best you can with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. And that is God's assignment for you. And when God's assignment changes, he shows that to you and you go through the open door. So it has been, um, it's been one exciting step after another, very honestly. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. It was a real privilege to hear yeah. what God has done yeah. in your life. And praise God. I would say one, one thing in closing in our interview. You know, people... Give testimonies sometimes who have had very, very difficult lives. They've been in drugs. They've been in all kinds of awful, awful things. And they pick up a tract on the street and they hear the gospel or something. And they come to know the Lord and everybody is saying, wow, God's grace is amazing. Praise God. But I sat down and I thought about this uh, several times. I probably heard the gospel a thousand times before I came to Jesus Christ as my Savior. I heard the gospel at least twice a week, every week from the time that I could remember. And God did not give up on me. And God continued to pursue me. And then when I was 17 years of age, finally I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is grace, that is mercy, that is patience, and that is love. And so all the glory and honor and praise of what has happened in our lives that is good uh, goes to the Lord because he's a good Lord and he is worth following. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome.